In both 4x4 and all-wheel drive systems, engine power is transmitted to all four wheels. But the way it's done, and the purpose behind each, is quite different. In reality, there are two types of four-wheel drive systems. The basic 4x4 system are less efficient and are specifically designed for off-road use only. However, full-time 4x4 systems are also available, and we will explore them shortly. So let's dive deeper into how these drivetrain systems actually work. Most four-wheel vehicles deliver engine power to just two wheels, yet vehicles often run across a range of surfaces, like tarmac, loose gravel, or snow, which affects grip and control. On these varied surfaces, wheels behave differently. Some maintain grip, while others may start slipping. This difference in behavior is managed using what's known as traction control. There is another problem associated with the wheels of the vehicle. Imagine both rear wheels connected by a single solid shaft. Now when the vehicle negotiates a turn, the outer wheel must travel a greater distance, while the inner wheel follows a shorter path. However, because the shaft forces both wheels to rotate at the same speed, the inner wheel is unable to adjust and consequently slips or skids in an attempt to compensate for the difference. This condition leads to drivetrain wind-up, where mechanical stress accumulates within the drivetrain components rather than allowing natural wheel movement. To improve traction and vehicle stability, different types of drivetrain systems were developed. Let's now understand, practically, how each type of drive system addresses specific traction problems. The first type is Rear Wheel Drive, or RWD. In most cars, unless it's a compact rear engine model, the engine is located at the front, while power is delivered to the rear wheels. The front wheels handle steering, and the rear wheels handle propulsion. The engine's power is first sent to the transmission, which is essentially the gearbox. Once the vehicle is started, we control engine speed using the accelerator, but direction and speed management are entirely handled by the transmission. From the gearbox, power is transmitted to the differential located between the rear wheels. This unit splits the engine's power equally 50-50 between both rear wheels, assuming the car is driving on a smooth, even surface. This is actually a brilliant gear system. Engine power enters the ring gear, which is connected to the spider gear. The spider gear then distributes equal power to both axle shafts, sending it to each wheel. The spider gear rotates in two ways first along with the ring gear, and second on its own axis. On a straight road, it simply rotates with the ring gear, keeping both wheels spinning evenly. When the vehicle turns, the outer wheel needs to rotate faster. In this case, the spider gear not only spins with the ring gear, but also rotates on its own axis, allowing the outer wheel to spin faster than the inner one. However, this gear system has one major drawback. If one wheel gets stuck on a slippery surface, the differential sends most of the power to that wheel, because it's easier to rotate, leaving the other wheel with little to no power. This leads to a serious loss of traction. So once again, this results in poor traction control. You'll often find this issue in many budget-friendly cars, where we simply push the vehicle out of trouble rather than relying on any advanced technology. However, some vehicles are equipped with traction control systems, if a tire loses grip, the system automatically applies brakes to that wheel and diverts power to the one with better traction, offering improved stability on slippery surfaces like rain-soaked roads. An advanced version of this is the Limited Slip Differential or LSD, which can partially lock the spider gear inside the differential, allowing power to be better distributed even when one wheel starts to slip. Most high-performance vehicles, like sports cars, use rear-wheel drive because it offers better balance and handling. It's also well-suited for heavy-duty vehicles that carry loads. But the downside is poor traction control, especially during off-roading. The tires often fail to grip loose or uneven terrain properly in a rear-wheel drive setup. This led to the development of front-wheel drive, or FWD. In this system, the transmission and differential are directly attached to the engine, and together they send power to both front wheels. Here, the transmission, differential, and axle are combined into a single unit called a transaxle. Front-wheel drive vehicles are highly efficient. They offer better fuel economy and are cheaper to manufacture. As the shorter drive shaft reduces component cost and complexity, 
Since the engine's weight rests directly above the front wheels, FWD cars provide better traction, making them suitable for light off-roading. However, they're not ideal for sports cars as they struggle with high-speed cornering and tend to understeer. But if serious off-roading is the goal, then we must look towards four-wheel drive or 4x4 systems. In 4x4 vehicles, engine power is necessarily increased. It's simply distributed evenly to all four wheels to achieve better traction control. The engine power first reaches the transmission, and from there it is sent to the transfer case, the heart of a 4x4 system. The transfer case is crucial in a 4x4 vehicle, and it's responsible for splitting power between the front and rear axles. From the transfer case, one shaft goes to the front differential and another to the rear differential. So at minimum, a 4x4 vehicle includes two differential units, one for each axle. Now let's understand the transfer case a bit deeper. A 4x4 system typically includes three drive modes, 2H, 4H, and 4L, and all of them are controlled via the transfer case. Let's begin with the 2H, or the two-wheel high mode. Most 4x4 vehicles have an additional gear lever or switch to activate these modes. In two-wheel high, engine power is sent only to the rear wheels, allowing high-speed driving on normal roads like a regular rear-wheel drive car. To activate four-wheel drive, a chain mechanism connects the front drive shaft. Initially, power goes to the rear, but a second gear and a sleeve mechanism link the front shaft as well, enabling power delivery for all four wheels. This setup works well for standard off-road conditions, and it's known as 4H, or four-wheel high mode. However, for extreme off-road conditions, more torque is required. In 4H mode, speed is high, but torque is limited, making it insufficient for very rugged terrains. That's why a third mode called 4L or 4-wheel low is introduced. As you might know, torque and speed share an inverse relationship. By reducing speed, we can increase torque. To boost torque, an additional gear set is included in the transfer case. This set slows down wheel speed while multiplying torque, ideal for crawling over rocks, steep climbs, or deep mud. The gear ratio in 4L is usually around 1 is to 3, meaning the vehicle speed drops to one-third. But torque is tripled, giving serious pulling power. When 4L mode is activated, a front sleeve disengages, and power is routed through this additional shaft, delivering increased torque to both front and rear axles. For example, if the engine produces 400 Newton meters of torque at 3000 RPM, this mode multiplies it to 1200 Newton meters while reducing engine speed to 1000 RPM, helping each tire receive around 300 Newton meters of torque. This same basic 4x4 system is found in many entry level off road vehicles, such as the Jeep Wrangler Sport or older Toyota 4Runner models. But this setup does come with limitations. In vehicles like these, it's recommended to use 4H and 4L modes only during off-road driving, not on regular tarmac, and here's why. As explained earlier, when both wheels are locked together by a solid shaft and the vehicle negotiates a turn, the inner wheel tends to slip due to the unequal travel distance. This causes drivetrain wind-up where mechanical stress builds up within the drivetrain components. Although such vehicles do have differentials on both front and rear axles, a similar issue still arises when turning on road. When the vehicle turns, the front wheels naturally rotate slightly more than the rear wheels, and their turning radius is wider. The differential can handle the speed variation between inner side front and rear wheels quite easily. However, both rear wheels cover a slightly shorter path compared to the front, meaning they rotate more slowly during a turn. In such cases, the front and rear wheels rotate at different speeds. To compensate for this, a center differential is required, but basic 4x4 systems don't include one. That's why using 4x4 mode on dry, paved roads can be problematic. All four wheels are forced to rotate at the same speed, causing drivetrain stress, tire wear, and traction instability. Full-time 4x4 systems found in modern SUVs, like the Toyota Land Cruiser or Land Rover Defender, include a center differential, allowing front and rear wheels to rotate at different speeds. This makes them suitable for both on-road and off-road conditions. 
Now, 4x4 systems are primarily designed for off-road use and aren't the most efficient. That's why a more modern system was developed. All-Wheel Drive, or AWD. AWD doesn't rely on modes like 2H or 4H. It's an intelligent system that automatically manages traction and distributes power based on real-time driving conditions. There's no transfer case involved here. Power is sent directly to the front wheels through a transaxle, while the rear wheels receive power via a propeller shaft. A clutch pack is installed on the rear axle, controlled by an electronic control unit, or an ECU. This ECU is connected to speed sensors on each wheel, constantly monitoring their rotation. Suppose one of the front wheels starts spinning faster due to a slip, the ECU detects this imbalance and instantly engages the clutch redirecting engine power to the rear wheels. But at the same time, the system applies brakes to the spinning wheel, helping transfer power evenly across the axle, ensuring better traction and balance. This is all managed by a smart computer program that constantly balances traction across all wheels. While AWD isn't built for extreme off-roading, it can still handle light trails and uneven paths. AWD systems are mainly designed for enhanced traction control. The vehicle decides automatically when to run in front wheel, rear wheel, or all wheel mode, adjusting power as needed based on driving conditions. It delivers excellent traction control even on road, especially useful in rain, snow, or sharp turns. We hope this helped you understand how different drivetrain systems work. Thanks a lot for watching the video.